Hello, and welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I am Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here, and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. I am joined, as always, by my fellow reader, Claire. Yeah, I thought you were going to I lost track of that. I almost did. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, Kirstra. I do the historical fiction book group on Facebook and also as the page turns. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And we have just kind of a roundup today. Um, although I did another secret theme. You did? I did for um, Asian American and Pacific Islander Month. Oh, dang so. on it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it just, sometimes with the roundups, it helps me to like think of a theme for myself yes. to narrow it down a okay. little bit. So, okay. yeah. Well, next time I'll have to come up with a secret theme. There you go. <laughs> and I will just be flat-footed over here not okay. knowing what to do. Okay. So. Do you want to kick us off with one of your books, Claire? Sure. I actually listened to one this time <gasps> that is available on Hoopla. I'm trying to walk more and mm-hmm. I'm doing some of the audiobooks because in case you haven't used Hoopla, they actually have a pretty decent selection of audiobooks they on there. They do. And the nice thing about Hoopla is that everything is instantly available, so right. you're not waiting forever and ever. No, but I think you get five downloads. Per month. Per month. Yeah. So, so the first one I did was called... The Last Bookshop in London and by Madeline Martin. And this one was pretty much a feel-good story, even though it was a World War II. Um, I love the narrator, first of all. She had a very good British accent, although her name was Saskia Marleveld. So, <laughs> yeah, go figure if she's British or not. Who knows? But, um, But it really made the story seem authentic to me. Mm -hmm. So the story is, um, there's two young ladies, Grace and Viv. They leave their small town of Drayton, and they are heading to the big city of London to get jobs. Um, One has overbearing parents. The other one has, is her parents are deceased, and her uncle has been not so nice to her. So Mm. um, a friend of their mom's has offered a place in the city, and uh, they go... And Viv works at Harrods as a clerk. Oh, fun. And Grace ends up getting a job at a bookstore with a man that's kind of old and cantankerous Mm -hmm. and hasn't really cleaned up his shop. And she really isn't an avid reader. Um, But, alas, a young, handsome man comes into the bookstore (laughs) and recommends The Count of Monte Cristo. (laughs) Yes, which was my son's favorite book. I by know the way. that's yeah. why I'm laughing because I and I know you've started it like yes, many never, times. Never finished, never finished it in shame, it. David. I hope you're not listening. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so she she starts to try to think. You know, what can I do to help this bookstore? And she makes displays and she mm-hmm. cleans it up. And gradually, of course, you know, they find out each other's stories. The old man, you know, he's lost his wife, and it's called Primrose Hill Books, which was. Mm-hmm something that was very important to them. Um, so, of course, it, it, it turns into a feel-good story. But then, of course, World War II starts, and you have the bombings, and you learn a lot about, like, victory gardens and the shelters, mm-hmm. and both girls join, like, different, like, um, capacities in helping out. Mm-hmm. Viv actually goes away to serve, and... Um, The bookstore, Grace, she decides to become one of the people that patrols the neighborhoods and helps in case there's a bombing to go Mm -hmm. get help or call the fire people. So, um, yeah, a lot of nice characters. The romance kind of continues in letter form because they're writing back and forth because, of course, he did the right thing and went and signed up. Um, So some sadness with some of the characters, but overall it was a pretty solid you know, read, and especially mm-hmm. good to listen to. I found nice. I, I really, you know, even when I was doing stuff around the house, I would just turn it on and keep mm-hmm. it going. So, yeah. Awesome. Pleasant surprise. Yay. The last last bookshop in London. Mm-hmm. So. I am so happy that you're joining me in the dark side of audiobooks. <laughs> I, it's I very know. exciting. I know. Who would have ever thought? I know. But I, I agree with you. I do particularly like when it's, you know, a book set – abroad or there's a character from somewhere else and you know the narrator can bring the accents to Mm -hmm. life and that kind of thing it it really just adds another layer of enjoyment right the The narrator definitely makes a big difference yeah and a bad narrator can like ruin the whole thing yeah i have had to quit (laughs) (laughs) ebooks 
two minutes in, I will quit an ebook if yeah. I if I can't with the narrator. So <laughs> I can get that. I yeah. Can. No. So what do you have? So my first one is a memoir. It is Dear Girls by Ali Wong. Um, Ali Wong, if you are not familiar with her, is a comedian. She's a writer. She does stand-up comedy. Her big breakout was a stand-up special for Netflix called Baby Cobra, um, in which she is performing while eight months pregnant, which oh is something you don't often see. See every day. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, so this is one of those things where if you like her stand-up, you will enjoy the book. If you do not like her stand-up you should skip this book <laughs> because it's very much the same voice and okay. the same kind of feeling. So um, the setup of the book is that she's writing letters to her two daughters for them to read when they're older, kind of talking about her early life and her career, how she met her husband, their father. Um, she covers a lot of ground. Um, she also talks about, you know, balancing – balancing motherhood and career mm -hmm. um, as she kind of blew up and became super famous. Yeah. Um, and also being an Asian American woman in comedy, which is, again, not something that we see a lot of. Like there's her and there's uh, Margaret Cho, and I don't think I could name another Asian woman comic, which probably also says something about me, but... Also, the state of stand-up comedy. Right. Right. Yeah. So um, it's funny. It is raunchy <laughs> and vulgar. So if you enjoy that, great. And if you are easily offended, again, give this one a miss. Um, but I do love a celebrity memoir. Oh, and uh, yeah. I find Ali Wong hysterical. So I really enjoyed it. Yeah, that sounds good. I kind of mm -hmm. like the premise of where she's writing to her daughters, too. That mm -hmm. sounds interesting. Yeah. So. yeah. So if you're not familiar with her, I would start with her stand-up special. Because <laughs> okay. that's only an hour. That's a small investment. And you'll know, like, right 15, away. 20 minutes in, if you can hang or not. <laughs> okay. You know? Sounds good. Um, yeah. Okay. I'll have to put that one on my list. Mm -hmm. All right. So, oh, and I forgot to tell you, too, about the first one. They yeah. also bring in, like, several books. Like, she starts reading in uh, the subway, and okay. so different classics will make an appearance. Nice. Um, so it might be a fun read for a book club, too, is what I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, absolutely. So, sorry for forgetting. <laughs> um, I am going to go to my second one, which is very timely. It's re Remarkably Bright Creatures, um, and this is by Shelby Van Pelt. I believe this is a debut novel. It is Jenna's Book Club. We all know how I love Jenna. <laughs> Not even going to apologize. No. Um, but I want to start because it's, it, it's an interesting book because you have three different characters. You have Tova, who is um, an older woman who's a widow. She is a cleaner at night at a marine aquarium. I believe it's in Washington State. And then you have Marcellus, who is the 60-pound Pacific octopus who lives at said aquarium. That's um, awesome. Yes. And he has a very distinct voice. He gets his own little, you know, like interspersed chapters mm -hmm. and um he's also very mischievous he likes to go out on expeditions to find food because he's not quite satisfied with the the herring that they're mm -hmm. giving him and then you have a young man named cameron who is really a down on your luck character he has not quite gotten his act together he's about 30 he's just been dumped he doesn't have a home he just got fired uh no. not a whole lot going right for cameron no. um abandoned by mom and lives mm. lived with an aunt who was very good to him but he is really trying to find his footing and he ends up in this town um as well so but i kind of want to read you a, 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 just a a portion of what marcellus's yeah, yeah. things sound like day 1306 of my captivity <laughs> i am very good at keeping secrets you might say i have no choice whom might i tell my options are scant. To the extent I am able to communicate with the other prisoners, those dull conversations are rarely worth the effort. Blunt minds, rudimentary neural systems, they are wired for survival and perhaps expert at that function, but no other creature here possesses intelligence like mine. It is lonely. Perhaps it would be less so if I had someone with whom to share my secrets. Secrets are everywhere. 
Some humans are crammed full of them. How do they not explode? It seems to be a hallmark of the human species, abysmal communication <laughs> skills. <laughs> not that any other species are much better, mind you, but even a herring can tell which way the school it belongs to is turning and follow accordingly. Why can humans not use their millions of words to simply tell one another what they desire? The sea, too, is very good at keeping secrets. One in particular from the bottom of the sea, I carry with me still. So that kind of gives you like a That's little, awesome. pro, uh, you know, segu mm -hmm. into the fact that um, Tova, her son disappeared 30 years ago. So they assumed he committed suicide. She has not quite believed this. And um, her husband has passed away recently. So this is something she would really like to resolve. So mm -hmm. eventually, you know that Marcellus is going to help her in this journey. But on the other hand, he's also very funny. He, he steals treasures. He mm -hmm. has like a little trove in his tank, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so um, it was really good. The only character I kind of had problems with is Cameron. Mm -hmm. I just kind of wanted to slap him and go, it's not always everybody else's fault, Cameron. Get your act together, you know. Yeah. But um, he does. He does in the end. <laughs> so, you know, they do wrap it up nicely with a mm -hmm. bow. And uh, it was good. So I really enjoyed it. Nice. So. That one sounds so good. Oh, it is. And I read it so fast. All so. right. It's going on the list. Yeah. Yeah. All right. If you like animals. Yeah. Yeah. You got to well, read it. octopuses are like the hot animal right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, you know, did you watch the Netflix octopus? I didn't. Oh. But I, I oh. know about it. Yeah. That was a that was a big tearjerker at the end. Yeah. But um, yeah, they have a certain lifespan. So that mm -hmm. that's the other thing about the days because he knows his <gasps> end is coming. Ah, so, okay. Yeah. Interesting. It is. All right, gonna have to pick that one up. Okay. All right, my next one is, um, I believe it was a debut novel. It is the Poppy War by R. F. Kuang, um, and this one. It was so good. It is the first in a trilogy. At this point, all three books are out. Okay. So, hooray. Yeah. <laughs> you won't be left hanging. Um, I've only read the first one because I read it when it came out and then the other, had to wait for the other two books, and I haven't gone back at this point. Um, but this is like a both military, historical – it's a historical military fantasy is what it is. And it's set in – um, a fictionalized China. It's based on um, 20th century Chinese history. Okay. Um, so lots of conflict with Japan, the end of the Opium Wars, hence the Poppy War, Opium Wars, right? Um, and it's got, you know, like basically the rape of Nanking okay. is in the book as, you know, a fictionalized conflict between these two nations, but it's it's basically Chinese history. Um, our main character is Rin. At the beginning of the book, she is 13. She is a war orphan living in a tiny little village, very rural, um, in the south where all of the like peasants live, right? Um, and she is looking down the barrel of an arranged marriage um, by the people who are looking after her. And she decides that is not what she wants from her life. Um, so she studies, studies, studies for this test. It's a test that everyone in the country takes at the same age, and it determines um, who is eligible to go to this special academy. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a military academy, really. So she takes this test. She aces it. She is the only person from her entire province <laughs> that gets selected to go to the school. So it's like a fish out of water thing because she is poor, rural, dark skinned orphan. And she ends up at this very like high class school with the dot, like the children of noblemen and, okay. you know, that kind of thing. Um, it's also kind of the, you know, um, child discovers that they are, super special and important. So it's got that theme to it too, but it is very dark okay. um, and kind of brutal, um, but not in a gratuitous way. So it's, it's all about war and 
at this academy, Rin is studying to become, you know, a soldier or an officer. It's kind of like um, West Point meets Hogwarts Mm -hmm. a little bit, Okay, you know? Um, And she discovers that she does have a talent for um, shamanistic magic. So that's the only kind of magic that we really have in this world. There's no, like, waving your wand and things. Luminous but and, yeah. Right. But okay. there are people who can channel the powers of the deities, and she is one of them. So that becomes very important. Later on, she and a small group of other people with similar talents um, end up becoming very important because the Japan invades again and everyone goes to war so a lot of sort of the um second half of the book is really kind of dealing with the horrors of war okay um and dealing with you know she's been they've all been trained in this academy but to what end like whose gain are they serving Mm -hmm. right so there's some political intrigue um there's history there's a little bit of magic um but it's just incredibly well written um rin is a fascinating character she is um a very complicated character which i appreciate like um there's no there's no black and white in this world at all it is all shades of gray um and she's kind of trying to figure out where in that spectrum she wants to be like where's okay. the right place to be um so it's it's excellent um i wish i knew a little bit more about 20th century chinese history so that i could like pick up on some of the commentary that i'm sure she's making mm-hmm. um so i would guess if anyone is a scholar of chinese history they might get a little more out of it than i did but it's still a great story it's an adventure story and a coming of age story um and i'm definitely at some point going to go back and read the other two i just feel like i might need to read this one (laughs) again first because it is dense okay um but really highly recommend okay good also sounds like if you were one of those people that enjoyed some of the young adult like military fantasy things yes. and have grown up you mm-hmm. might enjoy like yeah, progressing sort of the to something step. like this yeah yeah mm-hmm. so. definitely all right so my next one is another historical it's called the tobacco wives and this book is gorgeous like these deckled edges I, I, i'm just in love with the way that paper looks <laughs> i read this as a as an arc um and ended up joining a like an author Skype that I saw mm-hmm. advertised online and I won the book and some other cool things but um it was really cool to hear the author's take on why she wrote the story mm-hmm. and where she was from because it starts out you're it's in a town called Brightleaf and it's probably right as World War II was ending okay so a lot of women are working in the factories mm-hmm. and if you know anybody from that area of like North Carolina like the minute I read it I was like oh this is Winston Salem this mm-hmm. is RJ Reynolds you know this is some tar heels yeah um, so you know they had such pride in tobacco because it mm-hmm. was their whole economy pretty mm-hmm. much. But yet, you know, you also start to discover at this time, like the health issues with tobacco. So we have a a young woman whose mom has dropped her off. Her father died in the war, and she is dropped off with an aunt who was a seamstress to, they call them the tobacco wives. It's like the elite women of this town, Mm. and they have all kinds of social events, and and she makes them, like, custom dresses, ball gowns. So if you kind of like fashion and stuff, you might really like this book, too. Um, Well, anyway, she comes down with, like, Maddie is, um, is that her name? Yes, Maddie. Maddie is an apprentice to her, pretty much. She's Mm -hmm. learning the trade, um, but her aunt becomes ill, so she has to step into this role, and there's a very big corporate event coming up. Um, So she's making all these custom gowns, some hats, other things, and um, the lead woman her name is mitzi winston so i'm thinking that's taken off from like Mm. winston cigarette (laughs) she brings her into her house you know kind of watches over her while her aunt is in the hospital and um she comes across some documents that may suggest that there's something off about the new cigarettes that they're coming Mm. out with uh with 
you know, they say mint, but I'm thinking it might be menthol. Um, And how they're supposed to be great for new mothers, you know, to calm your nerves and whatever. And meanwhile, some of the women, including Mitzi, has had like several miscarriages. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you're starting to see the different effects. So she is trying to grapple with what to do with this information. Um, But on the other hand, these people have been so nice to her, and this is her livelihood, so there's this push-pull. There's also portions of the novel that talk about the women that have been working in these factories and kept them going, Mm -hmm. and now suddenly are going to be bounced out on their behinds because, hey, the The men men are are home! home. You know? Mm -hmm. Um, And then one thing that was really interesting was she said there was like a locked part of the factory where they were like sweeping things up and they called them like recon cigarettes. And her uncle really worked there. Um, Members of her family were Hmm. from this town. One of her relatives was like a portrait artist. So a lot of the portraits that were done of the the Reynolds family, Mm -hmm. you know, her uncle or whatever did. So, yeah, it was really fascinating to Hmm. me. Um, of course, I have a friend that worked and lived there for a number of years, so okay. that really made it interesting um, to me. So, yeah, it's a, it's a interesting book. Of course, there was a romance that was in there too, and that was something that was interesting because the author said originally her protagonist was much younger, mm-hmm. and the publisher had her kind of rewrite and edit that because she wanted her to be older. You know, they they wanted to introduce, so you kind of hmm. got a little insight as to. You know, what might happen to your book when you publish it and then how long it took her. But, yeah, if you like historical fiction, um, Hmm. the South, yeah, I'd recommend The Tobacco Wives. Do you think that would be a good book discussion? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely because of the whole, you know, even though some of it might have been a little bit implausible, Mm -hmm. you still have the realization of, like, what do you do? Like, what decisions do you make and how do you fight the man, you know, mm-hmm. the corporation, or your whole livelihood. So, right. So, yeah, definitely. Cool. So No, that sounds good. Nice. Um, all right. My last book <laughs> is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. Um, and this book, <laughs> this book is a ride. It is hugely entertaining and very warm-hearted and deeply implausible. <laughs> like, it's a little bonkers. Uh-huh. So you've just got to, like, Buckle up and go, go for the ride. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and the best way to describe this one is um, Crazy Rich Asians meets Weekend at Bernie's. Oh. <laughs> so our main character is Madeline Chan. She is 26. She lives at home. She works for the family business um, as a wedding photographer. So... The Chans have a whole wedding operation where they do cake, flowers, hair and makeup, entertainment, right? And their their tagline for advertising is, don't leave it to chance, leave it to the Chans, <laughs> which is hysterical. <laughs> um, so at the beginning of the book, what kind of kicks us off is that um, – Mehdi's mother, who is one of four sisters um, in an Indo-Chinese family living in um, kind of the Bay Area, uh, her mother sets her up on a blind date. Um, we come to find out later her mother has basically catfished <laughs> her date pretending to be Mehdi on a dating app. <laughs> oh, no. So there's a lot of boundary crossing happening here, right? So Mehdi goes on this date. It does not go well, and it ends with a car accident and Mehdi's date dead Oh! after the car accident. And then (laughs) Mehdi decides that the best thing to do is to put the body in the trunk of the car and drive home to get her mother's help. (laughs) And it is off to the races from there. So the family business is the next day they have a giant wedding. It's their biggest wedding to date. Um, It's on this island off of the coast of California at a brand new resort. Um, It's a giant Indo-Chinese wedding with literally thousands of guests 
like 2,000 guests and one <laughs> this dead, wedding. And one dead body. And a dead body yeah. um, who ends up coming along for the ride because, of course, he does. Yes. So we, while there, Mehdi also runs into her ex-boyfriend from college, the one who got away, that she never told her family about. Um, there's the dead body. There is the theft of some wedding gifts. Like, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> a lot. It just kind of careens from one thing to the other. Uh-huh. But the characters are so entertaining that if you can set aside your none of this would ever happen mm-hmm. voice, it is so entertaining. It's a super quick read. It's a perfect beach read. Yeah, I was going to say, it perfect. sounds like a fantastic vacation yeah. read. Is there a, a sequel to that one? There now? is a sequel out, and it is called, I think, Four Aunties and a Wedding. Uh, yeah, something like that. Something okay. like that. I thought I have seen that yeah. float by. Yes. Yeah. Um, but it's very funny. The aunties all sort of bicker back and forth, um, and you get a lot of um, Indo-Chinese culture and, like, immigrant culture, like, Asian immigrant culture in America also. So, like, what traditions they hang on to, what traditions they're letting go of. Um, so that was fun. Um, it's just it's just a wild – it's bonkers, but in a very entertaining way. Okay. So, Sounds fun. Yeah. Yeah. Something light and fluffy. Yeah. Palate cleanser. <laughs> well we all need those absolutely sometimes you get reading too many dark things and yes. you just need like a little ray of sunshine and this is definitely a ray of sunshine okay sounds good yeah so i think that's what i've got yeah well coming up in june we're gonna do our annual right <gasps> the, the stack, stack of, of shame, shame. <laughs> we'll have to see if sean can put some uh voice effects on that <laughs> But yes, that's right. I had almost forgotten yeah. that June will be our stack of oh, shame. Oh, I'm preparing. Um, there are yes, so many. I, I have a, a huge stack of I shame. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so please do let us know what you have been reading lately. Um, if there are any of the books that we've talked about today that you have read, um, let us know what you think about them. Um, and be prepared because we would also like you and June to chime in with the books that are on your stack of shame. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want to feel good about ourselves. That's right. (laughs) Spread the shame. That's right. All right. Thank you, everyone. Until June, um, happy reading. Take care.